The go bowling at the Glen race at Watkins Glen was one to forget for Ryan Blaney. The reigning Cup Series champion was coming off of a strong result in Atlanta and hoped he could do the same here at Watkins Glen. However, the race was completely ruined for the number 12 crew. After the race, Blaney was completely furious with NASCAR and blamed them for the problems he faced on the track. But you won't face any problems by hitting that subscribe button for our channel. We'll update you with only the best and latest content on NASCAR, so don't miss out on the action. Blaney was heading into the race after a poor qualifying run on Saturday. He only managed to qualify 30th and was preparing for an uphill battle on Sunday. While he was hoping to slowly climb up the ladder during the race, he faced tragedy on the very first lap. During the first lap of the race, Blaney was involved in a major accident along with Corey LaJoy, Denny Hamlin, and Kyle Busch. But how Blaney got involved in this is still a mystery. On the opening lap, LaJoy first got loose and spun Kyle Busch. He then caused the entire field behind him to take evasive maneuvers. However, Hamlin got caught in the crash. During that moment, it looked as though Blaney had got through clean but he just wasn't able to steer the car after passing through the incident. While all the cars were trying to avoid a spinning Kyle Busch, one of them hit Blaney and broke his steering column and couldn't control his car. The number 12 had to be towed back into the garage. However, NASCAR did not allow the number 12 crew to repair the car. Instead, they were forced to retire from the race. This is why Blaney was furious at NASCAR. How are they going to dictate if we are done or not? They have no idea of the damage, Blaney said. They said, because I couldn't drive it back to the pits, we're done. But if you get four flats, you get towed back to the pit box. You can't drive it back. I don't know what's going on or why they wouldn't even give us a shot to work on it. I don't agree with it. And I don't even know what happened, honestly. They stacked up and I caught someone in the left front. It completely broke the steering arm. I don't know if we would have been able to fix it. That's the frustrating part. Just don't even give us a chance. You just end our day. Don't even let us look at it before it's in the garage. It stinks. Ryan Blaney is absolutely furious that NASCAR did not even give him a chance to check if the car can be repaired or not. Unfortunately, the rules dictate that if you are towed into the garage, you can't go back on the track to race. But is this rule right? NASCAR reporter for Fox Sports, Bob Pockris, gave his thoughts. Did Ryan Blaney get the raw end of a NASCAR rule? No. In the sense of NASCAR made the right ruling, his car was stopped on the track after a crash. He's out of the race. But is that the way it should be? No, it shouldn't be that way. Especially in the playoffs. Especially when these drivers who have worked all year are now stuck in these three race rounds to try to have to prove something. To try to have to do something. To try to have to earn points or wins. And you're going to take it all away after a first lap crash. Especially at a road course where things tend to get jumbled up. Bob Pockris thinks that NASCAR should modify the rules to suit the playoff drivers. Unlike the regular season in the playoffs, the drivers have a lot on the plate. They don't have an entire season to make up for a DNF. Each round only has three races. So if a driver crashes in one of them, he only has two other races to make up for those lost points. The Watkins Glen race was the second race of the first round of the playoffs. Luckily, Blaney got some good points during the first race of the round in Atlanta so he didn't fall too far back due to this DNF. He's currently 8th in the standings, which is 5 places inside the cutoff. But if Blaney faces another DNF during the next race at Bristol, there is a chance that he may not qualify for the next round. This is why Pockers thinks that NASCAR should adjust the rules accordingly. However, in this scenario, Blaney did dig his own grave. At a course like Watkins Glen, chaos at the opening lap is prone to happen. Hence, the qualifying position at this circuit is very important. Despite this fact, Blaney only managed to qualify 30th. Yes, he could have qualified better, and part of it is his fault, but man, Pockers continued, I just think that this stunk for him, and I'm not big on, hey, let's just change the rules, because you know, at this one instance, somebody got the raw end of the deal. But you think about Martin Truex Jr., he had the same issue in the past. Let them at least look at the car. Let them at least see if they can change it. Now, I know what you're going to say. You're going to say, Bob, something will fall off a damaged vehicle in the playoffs and cause a caution. Well, I think you saw today that playoff drivers can cause cautions, plenty of them on their own. So it's the rule, but I still think Ryan Blaney got the raw end of it, and I wouldn't mind seeing NASCAR taking a look at either changing the damaged vehicle policy for the playoffs for all cars and just say, 
Hey, we'll tow you back and give you the six or seven minutes or eight minutes, depending on the track, and let you see if you can get the work done. Paukers thinks that NASCAR should take a closer look at this rule for the playoffs. At the very least, NASCAR can give the team a time limit to fix the car. If they can't do it within that time limit, it'll be game over. But if they can do it, they can return to the track and go racing. Let's step away from this scenario for a moment. Let's say a driver gets punctures on all four tires and is unable to drive back to the pits. The damage is not very severe as the crew will just need to change the tires. So even in this simple scenario, if the driver gets towed back, they will not be allowed to return. The damage is small and the repair work is just a simple pit stop, but still, it would be game over for them. This is why many think that NASCAR should make a change to the rules. In fact, the NASCAR teams want to play a more important role in the governance of the sport, so they can vote for changes like this. As many of you may know, NASCAR's current charter agreement is coming to an end after this season. Negotiations for a new contract are still underway, and there are still many disagreements between the team and NASCAR. One of the disagreements is that the teams want some say in the rules of the sport, but NASCAR is not willing to give them this. It's no secret that NASCAR has been very stubborn in these negotiations, but if the teams are able to convince NASCAR to let them have their say in the governance of the sport, it is likely that they will try to implement this change in the rules. It's not like the teams want to allow repairs after being towed for all races, but just for the playoff races where the drivers have a lot more on the line than the rest of the races. Now, Ryan Blaney will be headed to Bristol while occupying the eighth position. His best case scenario, win the race and get a guaranteed spot for the next round. His worst case scenario, suffer a first lap wreck and risk your playoff spot. Ideally, Blaney would even be happy if he just finished the race with decent points that get him into the next round. From the next round, the seeding will once again depend on the regular season performance. So as long as Blaney qualifies, he will be safe. Usually, during a first round, the top drivers do not get knocked out. It's always those who got into the playoffs at the last minute or by luck. Not going to name any names here, but some of you may know who I'm talking about. But Blaney is not one of them. From the next round, however, there will be a higher demand for the drivers to perform well as only the top eight playoff drivers will be advancing to the third round. It's going to be very interesting to see how the playoffs go. There are many possibilities for Ryan Blaney. He will definitely be aiming to win it all in the final race in Phoenix. However, there is a lot of competition from Joe Gibbs Racing and Hendrick Motorsports. Do you think Ryan Blaney can win it all this year? Post your thoughts in the comments section below.